Good morning. Welcome to our daily morning worship and prayer. Why don't we begin this day by worshiping God together? Sabiaya ng pag-ibig mo, kaya 
We are now in Psalm 131, and this is one of David's shortest but most beautiful psalms of all. And it's only three verses, so we'll, we'll kind of break it up. We'll read it one verse at a time, but you'll see how David's, David gives us a window into his soul through this psalm. Okay, let's read verse 1. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. Uh, what David was doing was he was referring to, it's a, it was an, a Hebraic expression in his time referring to pride, where to be proud meant to have a, uh, to be arrogant meant to have a, a proud heart and haughty eyes, which essentially meant you kind of look around for other people to compare yourself with, so that you can look down on them. So that was the context of the expression. And so David was saying he wasn't like that. And then he added that, I do not occupy myself with things too great for me, which actually was a reference to selfish ambition. And so basically David was saying he did not have a proud and self-sufficient spirit. Okay, verse 2. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. You know, David constructed his psalm in such a way where he implied, where although he, he was claiming not to be proud or haughty, but in the way he structured verse 2, he was essentially saying that it wasn't always that way with him. That there was a time early in his life where he was guilty of, pri of pride and arrogance. And that's not surprising because we're all guilty of pride. And what the picture that David gave us of is a weaned child. Now, technically, a weaned child is, is a baby or an infant who has graduated from his or her mother's milk and is now prepared to eat food. But that's not what David was talking about here. So when they referred to a weaned child, it was more a stage in a baby's life. So in other words, a very young child. And there probably is no better picture of absolute trust and confidence than a weaned child with his mother. I mean, if you picture a child, an infant, with his or her mother, that's a picture of peace, security, um, assurance, and hope. In fact, diba, we say nga, sleep like a baby. Did you sleep like a baby? Because it's a reference to a very peaceful sleep because again, babies, are able to sleep in peace as long as with their, they're with their mothers, no matter what's happening around them, because they fully trust in their parents' ability to protect them, to provide for them, and to care for them. In two words, David was talking about quiet confidence. Those are precious words. And in a way, that's my question to you this morning. Do you have that quiet confidence, like a weaned child that David was talking about. Now, if you ask people today, ask around uh, and ask people, do you trust God? You know, do you have confidence in God? 
I'm sure 9 out of 10 would say yes. But the question really is, to what degree? Or what kind of trust are we talking about? Or are, are you really, truly trusting in God? And maybe let me frame it this way. I remember um, uh, my wife and I, we served as missionaries a long time back uh, in Russia. And th th when, as we discipled Russian students, this phrase kept coming up. When we had to confront them at, this, at a certain stage in the discipleship journey, and we had to confront them with certain practices in their lives, we were surprised at how they all had the same comeback or, or pushback, separately, individually, without talking to each other. And they would say, but it's Russian. Okay? So they would defend their unbiblical practice by saying, but it's Russian. And so I realized that uh, for many Russians who are very proud of their culture and heritage, by the way, early in their, in their spiritual growth, if you ask them, yes, we trust God, we believe God, but only to the degree or up until it clashes with their cultural beliefs and practices. So if you ask them, do you trust God? Yes, but really deep down in their souls, they only trusted God, at least at that time, up until it clashes with their long-held beliefs that's been ingrained in their culture. So that was, we discovered, kind of like the the turning point in, 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 a, in a young Russian as we disciple him spiritually. It's when they're able to get beyond that, the, what's Russian, and really look to the Bible as the ultimate blueprint for life. That's when they truly uh, become mature believers and disciples. So it's the same way with all of us. I'm sure we all trust God to some degree. But do we trust God to the point where we are willing to totally walk away from whatever sin we continue to harbor in our lives? Do we trust God so completely where if He puts His finger on one, two, or however many unhealthy relationships we're involved in, that we're willing to surrender that all to God? Or uh, that we're willing to, again, abandon whatever shortcuts or unbiblical practices we may be practicing in our businesses or, or the way we do school or the way we do life that would bring dishonor to God. In other words, are we willing to burn our bridges? And bridges basically stand for whatever continues to link us with our past sins, relationships, habits, temptations, weaknesses. You know, Are we willing to burn all of those so that we have no option left except to totally submit and to follow God 100%. I believe David crossed that threshold. He reached that point at a certain point in his walk with God. And, he, and walking, he was walking in pride and arrogance and self-sufficiency. But when God put his finger to whatever it is David was holding on to, he chose God over his lifestyle. And that's why David, at this stage in his life, could really be like a weaned child who enjoyed absolute and total dependence on God. Okay, verse 3. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. You know, going back to that weaned child, again, we address God as Lord here in verse 3. We just did. Um, as Yahweh, as, uh, you know, awesome God now. Um, but really, the picture that the Bible gives us of God uh, is a family. In fact, when God taught, when Jesus taught His disciples to pray, He taught us to address Him as our Father. You know, the church is the bride of Christ. We're spiritual brothers and sisters because we're adopted into God's household. Isaiah 49 says, God will not forget us in much the same way that a mother would never forget her child. But in Mark 10, Jesus referred to children uh, in a discussion with the disciples and said, Whoever doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter. So here we go back to the picture of a child's absolute, unquestioning, unfiltered obedience and trust and confidence in God. Is that how we're receiving the kingdom of God? Is that how we look to God? 
again, with nothing held back, with no bridges existing, no lifeboats back into our past, where we're 110%, we've totally abandoned all of our lives into the purposes of God for us. You know, one last story. Um, when my kids were small, I loved, I have three kids, and when they were smaller, I loved putting them in high, I don't know, ledges or, I don't know, or a fence, and then they would jump into my arms. And, and whenever I asked them, jump, they would jump without second thoughts. In half a second, they'll jump into my arms. But you know, if I asked another kid, any other kid to do that, they, they're not going to jump into my arms. Why? Because they don't know me. My kids know me. And they know that I would never drop them. I would never let them down. And so in other words, key to this trusting in God is truly knowing God. We have to come to a place where we truly know Him in the depths of our soul. That's what David was saying, that we're like a wee child in our souls so that we can truly jump into His arms with full abandon into the purposes of God. And that's my prayer for all of us this year, that we would continue to grow in our knowledge of God, in our intimate, personal knowledge of God through His Word, in prayer, by stepping out in faith, by obeying Him, so that we come to the place in our lives where we become unquestioning in our faith and in our obedience. Why don't we end this morning's teaching, this psalm, by worshiping God once again.
Amen. So just before you go, allow me to bless you out of Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning. God bless you. And may you sleep like a baby tonight. Bye-bye.